Tell him, Marcus, I have a memory from school of, of prime numbers. Yeah. That they can't be divided up. Yeah, exactly. And that's all... That's as far as I it went? I don't remember why they even taught us that. OK, so you're absolutely right. A prime number, it's a number which you can't divide. It's indivisible, only divisible by itself and one. I mean, so what? Why are they What's so important? The well, yeah. they're so important for mathematics because they're really the building blocks of the whole of my subject. Um, if you take a number like 15, OK, is that a prime? No. No. What's it divisible by? 3 and 5. Exactly. And 3 and 5, they're primes, indivisible numbers. So for me, all numbers are built by multiplying these prime numbers together. Okay. And that's why they're so important. You get mathematics from these primes. <laughs> Two thousand years ago, people wondered if these important numbers went on forever, or if there were a finite number of them. A Greek mathematician called Euclid settled the debate with a brilliant mathematical proof. And this is how he did it. So we're going to start with somewhere where you're happy, OK? So uh, what was a prime number? Can you remember what the property of a prime was? It's divisible only by itself, or, or one. Exactly. So it's, they're the indivisible numbers. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And if it isn't prime, that means you can divide it, divide it, and divide it, until you get down to primes, which divide that number. So, OK, let's set off on our journey, this proof. Now, let's suppose that you think, crazy man, that there are actually only finitely many primes. Right. Okay? Fool that you are. Right. OK, okay. <laughs> so, so you think there are finitely many primes? I think primes. there are finitely many primes. OK, and I'm going to say, no, 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 I can prove to you why there are actually no infinitely many primes. OK, so let's say, give me the list of primes that you think there are. Two. Two, OK. Two, three. Yeah, three. Five. Five. Seven. Seven, OK. Eleven. OK, yeah, you can stop there, OK. Now, suppose you think, OK, that's all the primes there are. You don't need any more other than these ones, OK? Now I'm going to show you how the ancient Greeks proved there must be some primes which are missing from your list, OK? Right. So here's the trick. What you do is you multiply them all together. So you're going to do 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11. Which gives a grand total of 2,310. A figure that, because it's been made by multiplying 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11, has to be divisible by them. Now, here is the act of genius. This is Euclid's idea. He says, add 1 to this number. Okay. So let's look at this new number. Is this number divisible by any of the primes in your list? I don't know. OK, well, look, at, is it divisible by 2? Well, well, no. No, because it's That's an odd right. number. Right. So it's not divisible by 2. Yeah. Whereas before, the number was perfectly divisible by 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11. Now, if you were to divide it by these same numbers, because you've added 1, you would always have 1 left over. So, I've built this number such that this number is not divisible by 2, 3, 5, 7 or 11, because you always get remainder 1. So it's only divisible. So is it a new prime number? Well, there you go. So this is either a new prime number or... There may be a number that divides it. It's got to be a prime which divides it. But it's not one but of it's those. not on your list. Right. So actually, you miss some. So there is another prime out there. Yeah, you miss one. Brilliant. That is an act of genius, Alan. It? It, absolutely, because that is the... You must be learning something. <laughs> you are learning something. You've got to the heart of the problem. 